Hello, everybody. I'm Kavitha Chandran. I'm a journalism Hi. trainer with the Thompson Reuters Foundation. I've had the pleasure to run the Change Makers program for both journalists and media advocates this year. It's a program that brings together people that are developing solutions to pressing human rights issues. During the program, we discussed various possible solutions to world problems and also brought in guest speakers from all walks of life who are change makers themselves. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to four participants from the Change Makers program who were chosen because of their relentless desire and conviction that they can and must do their bit to change this world for the better. I'd like you to meet Joy Das Gupta, a media professional from India. After nearly 20 years in journalism, where he worked as a reporter, an editor, defense journalist, television producer, and a media trainer, Joy Deep started his own news website called News Sense with a motto to provide news that makes sense. An entrepreneur, a columnist, trainer, documentary maker, and fact checker who's out to debunk fake news. Joy Veep has won various awards in journalism, communication, as well as animation. And he now works with an army of youngsters in a country that is rife with strife, pointing them towards positive news and solutions journalism. Welcome to the Trust Conference, Joy Deep. To Joy Deep, my next question is to, uh, to you. Digital media and fact checking, as you've mentioned, is a very important part of what you do. Um, tell us more about what you do in the field in a country where the spread of misinformation and disinformation is very, very concerning. Fake news, as we all know, is deeply linked to internet and the information technology. We are growing digitally, no doubt, but at the same time, we are falling prey to the fake news too. We at NewsSense have been working as one of the prominent fake news debunking websites in India apart from publishing stories with a solution-based approach. As the world's largest democracy with the second largest population, the issue of fake news poses a young, unique threat to India. So it is very much important to alert and make people aware of how to consume information which they come across every day on the internet, mainly through social media. Thus, I am also trying to reach out to people in our society men, women, children, and senior citizens from educational institutes, non-government organizations, police, corporates, politicians, to the people at the grassroots level in India with the tools and techniques to help them develop critical thinking skills. I'm associated with Google News Initiative India Training Network and BBC Young Reporter India Program as trainer, which supports my all these trainings. This way, I'm trying to reach and my role, I'm uh, trying to play my role in giving the clarity to the people in a small but in a significant way. Thank you so much, Joydeep. Um, speaking of what is close to everyone's heart, Joydeep, um, something very close to your heart is solutions journalism as it is to mine. And just before you speak, and for those in the audience who may not be familiar with this term, uh, a solutions-based approach to writing a story involves investigating a solution just as you would investigate a problem. So the only difference is that instead of harping on the same problem in your stories, we teach journalists that you have to talk and investigate the solution and make people accountable for those solutions. And this is all because there's news fatigue setting in. Lots of negative news, news, uh, bad news around there. COVID certainly didn't help. Um, so giving more rise to hope than helplessness. Um, Joydi, please share what makes you believe that as an editor, this is the best way to combat news fatigue. Yes, it is the positivity and feel good factors that uh, motivates me to follow a solutions based approach in my journalism practice. Solution journalism not just highlights problem, but also suggests solutions to the problem. It gives voice to the voiceless. It gives a positive hope to both the writer as well as the reader. It is good for both our physical as well as mental well-being. Then why not practice such a beautiful way of uh, doing journalism? 
Apart from practicing solution journalism in new sense, I am also trying to create an ecosystem of solutions journalism in India with a team of media students. I am training them how to report and how to cultivate a sensitive story, which we regularly and carefully publish on new sense, which is a solution based uh, digital media initiative, and it's a non profit uh, platform, wherein my students volunteer in the key role as reporter, editor, sub editor, video editor, photographer, under my observation and my guidance. That's great, uh, Joy Deep. There's so much that you guys do. Um, so I'm curious uh, about the impact of the Thomson Reuters Foundation Change Makers Program and what is the impact it has had on you. What further changes do you all see yourself incorporating in your work from here on? I'm very curious to hear. What about you, Joy Deep? Yes, after attending this Change Maker Program, I got more clarity in my approach of working. Apart from uh, collaboration opportunities, I have made a good number of friends across the world who are equally talented and are doing extraordinary work in their respective fields. And together we can ensure to make this world a beautiful place to live on, I believe. Special topics such as solution journalism and uh, digital media has expanded my horizon of understanding. Mentors like Avita and Sid are now guide forever. Now, uh, with the new title, Change Maker, which calls for a greater commitment towards our works and society, I would like to bring in the changes in terms of the quality story we do, we publish, and at the same time, working with the people in different segments of the society. I'm also thankful to the Thomson Reuters Foundation for acknowledging our efforts and giving us a, such a platform like Trust Conference to reach out to the greater audience with our work. I think hopefully in future, I will get a lot more of support from you people, uh, more, more collaboration so that we can get encouraged and with conviction, with firm conviction, we can do the good work that we are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck, Joy Deep, and thank you for the kind words. All power to you guys. With that, we come to the end of this wonderful session. It's been my privilege to be in conversation with these amazing four people who, like all the other change makers in the program this year, are people who not only have many ideas for solutions to world problems, but also keep trying until they see a difference. Kudos to everybody. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. I'm here at Harvard Center for Public Leadership. It is the first time uh, in, in five uh, attempts to try to get travel approvals from Philippine courts that I've been allowed to travel. You know, you don't really know what freedom is until you almost lose it and you wind up valuing it a lot more. I think there is no better time to talk about trust than now because what is fraying at all of our societies is precisely this, the loss of trust. And a lot of that happened because we are using social media platforms, technology as the connective tissue amongst our societies. Journalists, beginning as early as I'd say 2014, well, we lost our gatekeeping powers and tech has taken that, is now in charge of being the gatekeepers and yet, they've abdicated responsibility for it. So here's the real problem that we're facing. Right now, the social media platforms, and you talk about every single one, um, the algorithms, the design of the platforms actually prioritizes the spread of lies laced with anger and hate over facts. Research has shown that as early as 2018, and that's actually a study that was done in MIT here in Boston. Um, so if you have no facts, how can you have truth? And if you don't have truth, you don't have trust. Trust creates that shared reality where if we have a shared set of facts, everyone with different opinions, with different viewpoints of the world can actually come together to find solutions. I think that's what we're after here today. You know, what kind of world 
are we going to create? What kind of world are we going to live in if we don't have a shared reality? The trigger is technology. And now what has to happen, and many of you have probably heard me say this for the last few years, is that we need to have legislation. Um, but that legislation must be right. Too much of it has been focused on content moderation, which then walks right into all of the free speech issues in many of the democratic nations. We, it needs to move further upstream to look at the design, to look at algorithmic bias, and algorithmic amplification. I wish you all great luck and brilliant insights through this conference because we cannot live without trust. I'm Maria Ressa, thank you and have a fantastic time. Hello everyone and welcome to Trust Conference. Wherever you're watching from, we are so glad to have you with us. The converging crisis of health, economy, and climate are deepening divides and putting our democracies and our planet under threat. But there is also a great opportunity for global and collaborative responses. Now is the time to address the power imbalance that defines the world's populations. I'm Maria Ressa. My name is Vivian Schiller. Good afternoon to everyone. Language, culture, effectively our identity and our way of life will be lost. It's now become very hard for companies to deny that climate change is a, is a human rights issue. Everybody should have access to decent work, uh, to education, to health care, to social protection. Climate migration is a reality. How can we convince companies that inclusion is not just good for society, but also for the bottom line? Um, black women are the fastest growing group of female entrepreneurs in the United States, right? So you could make the case that not investing in us um, has enormous downsides. The availability of trusted information, the protection of our